welcome back. Last session of the day. So we're going to be talking about it all right. We're going to be talking about making your own digital breakouts using mostly talking about using the platform called deck dot toys. So let me share my screen and pull that up to the front for us. Hold on one second. And boom. All right. All right, so I think both of you might have been with me earlier this morning, maybe only you or Lydia, but I think maybe both of you, when we looked at a digital breakout um, and did one actually, and then looked at the gallery and saw that we could search the gallery for additional breakouts and so on. Okay, so for this one, we're going to learn how to make our own. And that means everything like you get to decide the path you get to decide what activities you get to decide the story all of it so the platform you'll be using um for almost everything we're talking about today is deck dot toys however at the end of the session you'll see that i've provided some links to some other ways you could do this um one of the most common ways is actually just a combination of google forms google slides google docs and youtube videos and you can make a breakout. So I've put some links to some other ways to do this if you're interested in looking at those. I've picked deck.toys because as you saw to earlier today, if you came in the morning, there are a lot of built-in activities that have learners keep working with the content um, in order to Oh, yes, thank you, Lynn. <laughs> I couldn't quite remember. Um, keep working with the content in order to um, like break out of the various rooms or find the code or do whatever they need to do. And it provides all of these different activities all based on the same content knowledge if you use the study sets or um, based on your own content that you submit as slides that you build in their platform and that also come with their own activities that you can add in. So this is very new to me. It's almost as new to me as it is to you. <laughs> so um, that is a little bit of a challenge. So I think we will be learning a bit together and I just want to make sure I saved the right thing. So I'm going to share and give you the slide deck really quickly. So I don't, whoops. Hold on a second. There we go. I'm going to actually change this to anyone with the link because I have some people from outside who are interested as well. We're going to copy, done. And I'm going to put this in the chat for you so that I'll give you a second to open it, save it to your Google Drive. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm going to put it back in the chat again in just a second. <laughs> so we are just getting started. Let me check and see if you are perfect. Okay, um, so Tammy, I'm gonna put the link to this slide deck in. We were just getting started. Thank you. You're welcome. So go ahead and open that up, save it to your Google Drive. And then you may wanna come back to Zoom so that you're following my version or what I'm doing, right? All right, so when, now I've already created my account on the Deck Toys platform, and that is where you will go as well. That platform is http colon slash slash deck dot toys. You'll make your account there. Um, I would highly recommend that you make your account in Deck Toys with Google using your San Juan Google account because one of the things you will be able to do is import Google products like your Google Docs or Google Slides um, into Deck Toys if you want to. So um, that will only work though if you sign in with Google so that it kind of talks and, and knows which drive to connect to. Oops, hold on one second, admit. So um, I'm gonna give Lainey just a second to get in all the way and then I'm gonna put back in the chat the link to the slide deck. Welcome. And this is exciting. This is even more people than were registered in PL. So here's the slide deck. You'll want to go ahead and open that up and then come right back to Zoom. Um, make sure you save it to your Google Drive. Okay. 
in when I'm signed in, I happen to be in this screenshot. I'm in what's called my dashboard. My dashboard shows me my classrooms. I have two classrooms. One was created automatically for me. I can't edit the name of it. I can't delete it. Um, it is my test class. It will make a test class for you as well. But it, even though it's your test class, you can actually use it. You can create a deck, put it in the test class and give it to students. That's what I did this morning because I have another active deck that I'm gonna be using later this week for an event. And with the free account, you can only have two classrooms. So I have my test class and then I created another class and you can have one deck in a class at any given time that's kind of active and ready to go. Okay. So that's my classrooms. You notice if I was to try to click on plus to add a new classroom, I'd get an error message that says, if I wanna do that, I need to upgrade. Um, and then for decks, in the free version, you can have three private decks, meaning they're visible to you and your students, but they are not part of the deck gallery. Nobody else can see them. And you can have 100 public decks. I'm hoping that that means that if I share a deck to the gallery, it becomes public and part of my 100. But that also means I believe that you can pull in, but not for editing, any of the things from the deck gallery, which are at the bottom of my screenshot here, um, if I just assigned a classroom, for example, I could bring in those. Um, but if I choose to edit them, they become private again, unless I share them back out to the deck gallery, if I share the edited version. There are thousands of ready-made decks. Um, but we're going to talk about making your own. So this one that's on the left, the laboratory equipment, is one I took from the gallery. I did not edit it. I just assigned it to a class. So I took it from the gallery and I assigned it. This one on the right is one that I built. Um, I built this one, I designed the path, I designed the background using the tools and features available in Deck Toys to make this. Um, both of these are ones that if I click edit on this one, it doesn't let me because I didn't, I didn't save it from the gallery in a way that lets me edit it. This one is the one I created myself so I can totally edit it. I can completely redesign it, do whatever I want to it. Okay. So again, as I said before, in free, you can have two classrooms, two decks per room at a time and 40 students per classroom. For secondary, that can be tricky. Um, so two classrooms, two decks per room, 40 students. Maximum of three private decks, 100 public decks. To upgrade is $96 a year. They market it as $8 a month, but they don't charge you by the month, they charge you by the year. So $96 billed annually. Um, in addition to having more decks and more classrooms, you can have more students in a room. Um, you also, your data stays longer. Um, you only keep your data for seven days in the free version. Uh, so you should export it before it goes away. In the pro version, you keep it for 30 days and then you still need to export it if you need the data beyond that. And that data would be like your student's response data and participation data. Um, the other nice thing is in the pro version, which I don't have, by the way, <laughs> I only have the free version, you can upload voice clips to both the study sets and the slide activities. So you can add audio to those things, which is not something I can do right now. It is important to note that they do have immersive reader built into the study sets. So um, it only works in English, but if you type instructions for us for an activity, the students can click on the speaker to get that read aloud. Um, and then of course, as they release new features and so on, you'll have exclusive access earlier. For you, for learning how to build in your own breakout, you're going to spend the most time in your dashboard. So you create your account at deck.toys and then once you're signed in, you go to my dashboard. It creates that test classroom and you can also create another one if you would like. Click the plus to create a new classroom or click the plus that's green to create a new deck. Here are the components of a deck. So um, generally speaking, now I did say required, but um, oh, I see, and or, I did it right. So one or more study sets. These Think of these as vocabulary or concept lists. So it could be 
a term and then an explanation of the term or a concept and then a symbol that represents the concept. Your study set can have a word, a definition and an image or, or you could just have a word and an image um, and so on. You have to have a word. Whether you have both a text and an image is up to you. So one or more study sets and there are a couple of games that only work if you have at least two study sets, just so you know. And then, or if you don't wanna do a study set, you can have a slide deck of content, but you have to build it. Well, they did have an import feature for importing Google Slides. So fingers crossed that that would work. Um, otherwise you would build the slides right within the Deck Toys platform. And then they have a whole nother set of games and activities that just go with the slides. So that's required that you have a study set and or a slide deck of content and then activities that use the study set or activities that use the slides. So if you go to the slides, some you saw this this morning, um, you have the slides that you've created and now you're ready to do what's called insert a slide app. There are response apps, tools, mystery apps, but those are only available in the pro version and supercharge, which I'm not actually really familiar with, but they broke it up into categories in this link that I gave you. So the response apps ask for a response from your students. Um, they can type, draw, use a map, do a quick poll, um, take a photo or upload something from their computer. And then apparently voice is in beta and it might only be for the pro. Um, but the students can record their own audio of up to 20 seconds. Supercharge ones are, oh yeah, I do know these. Um, Supercharge ones are ones that kind of go along with the concept of a breakout, of having to find the clues and solve the mystery and break out of the room or escape. So they're things like treasure keys and locks and checkpoints and so on. I haven't done too many, um, but I've used both the treasure key and the lock so far. Um, so the students have to collect treasure keys with matching IDs to unlock a treasure so that they win the game. A lock will let you choose a text-based code to open it, a number code, a QR code, a voice, or a direction, up, down, left, right, northeast, southwest, and so on. And so um, this actually allows you to create all kinds of different types of activities still rooted around your content, but having to use their critical thinking skills in the topic that they're working on now towards their current learning targets in order to decipher something so that they come up with the code so that they can open the lock, for example. Um, and then, <laughs> so I haven't tried the gauntlet app, but it's not very nice. So basically the teacher just like with a snap, half the class loses half the points. I'm, I don't know why that would be a nice thing to do, but apparently it's an option that's available to you. Um, the checkpoint allows you to decide if the student can move on to the next activity. For example, if you are back in the classroom with students, you can have them have to give something to you physically before they can go to the next thing. Um, they obviously have multiple choice questions that you can add in. They have a drag and drop type of question things. Um, and then a jigsaw puzzle activity. So it will turn your slide image into a jigsaw puzzle that then probably reveals a clue. Like once they put the puzzle together, there'll be something on it that gives them a clue that they're going to need. And then you have your tools. Um, the randomizer helps you select a random student to respond. The buzzer will get students' attention by requiring them to respond unexpectedly for point scoring. But you also use the buzzer in one of the study set games. Um, it's a Jeopardy style game. And as the teacher, you control the buzzer. Um, you, you show a question and then you turn on the buzzer, which allows the students to hit the buzzer on their device in order to be the one who gets to respond to the question and try to earn the points for their team. Um, and you can label things and then audio clip is only for pro plan. And then these mystery apps are only for the pro plan, um, but they have a link for the whole thing with the mystery apps so that you can actually explore um, what those are if you decide you might be going for the pro plan and they have a demo also so that you can play with those. So those are the slide apps. Those are again, if you were to take something a little bit like this, like a Google Slides presentation, but turn it into a breakout by having checks for understanding and different kinds of ways that students are going to have to use and apply the knowledge in the context of having to break out, 
they would be able to put those slide apps or you rather would be able to put those slide apps throughout your slide deck in order to engage them in these processing and cognitive activities. The study set games are built on a study set, which is, oh, think of it like a flashcard set, right? And once you have a flashcard set in place for your breakout, you can choose any of these games. It'll just take the same study set and make all of these games. And so you can click, and there's actually a second page. <laughs> Um, one of the ones I haven't tried yet, so deck of cards. I haven't tried that one yet. Um, and it works as a physical deck of cards. So it randomly distributes the cards that are generated to the students and they click launch to distribute the digital cards. And then it's better as a whole classroom activity. So it's a really good idea to kind of read through these things and pick what you would like. I haven't tried this one yet, but um, you have you can say, you can have them work in teams in breakout rooms in Zoom and be like, well, I have this, who has that, for example. Um, and it would be the this and the that would both be study set items, probably the matching. Like I have a picture of blah, blah, blah. I have a picture of an apple who has the French word pum. And now they, they would just take those cards and distribute them as if they were a deck of cards so that you can play those kinds of games with it. So you can go all the way through flashcards is just what it sounds like. There's no game. There's there's nothing that they have to do other than maybe just look at them and flip them and, and remind. I like to use flashcards as kind of a right at the beginning of the breakout as a reminder of the concept words and content vocabulary that they're going to need during the breakout. So it's like, here, take this moment to study and refresh and review before you try to break out because you're going to need these definitions and these words in order to successfully complete the games. Um, rockets is actually like hangman, but instead of doing a hangman's thing, you have a set number of rockets on the page and you guess letters and it fills in the word if you guess correctly, but if you guess incorrectly, one of your rockets flies away. When you have no more rockets, you've lost. So rockets is actually like hangman, for example. So you can take a look, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of study set games. The two things at the top are actually the how to, and then you have a one more game here at the end, the word wheel. So I highly recommend taking a look at that. Oops. Those are required. You need something there to build your game. The ideal is to have some kind of story or context to kind of connect the activities together and explain why students have to break out. Um, you won't find this all the time. And if when you go to the deck gallery, some of them have a story or a context and some don't, or it's pretty loose, right? Like they set up a context with their first entry point. And then after that, you're just doing the activities until you break out. But ideally, like um, there's a story and there's there's a reason why they're stuck um, in this digital space and why they need to find the clues, why they need to break out. And you can set all of that up and provide it to them either in a slide or in an entry point little activity. Oops, sorry, <laughs> I'm going too fast. And then an optional thing you might like is you can have just a kind of blank grid with a path on it. Like there's nothing wrong with that. You could just have a white grid with a little red path that they follow. Um, but you can choose a background that matches a story, matches the story for a path through the deck. Other optional things are like treasure key locks, like we talked about earlier, or fun photos that you can, or gifts, like you can set it up so that gifts appear at certain points to encourage them and so on. Like those are all optional things. An example of a background photo, for example, is if I was going to do a breakout that was based on Paris. And really this vocabulary list off to the right has nothing to do with Paris, but let's say it did, um, or off to the left. So I found this photo of Paris on Google images. I've designed this path that roughly mirrors the Eiffel Tower, right? So that was a choice that I made so that I could, um, so that I could have a photo that matched my context for, my, for our breakout that we were going to do. And this La Maison et les Meubles, which means the house and furniture, is actually a study set that I pulled in. That's gonna give me um, a whole bunch of games and things to work with. So the process is to start a new deck by hitting the plus and giving it a name and hitting okay. And it will launch what's called the wizard. So when you first do that, you're going to choose, you can, a really simple one is just linear, right? It's just follow the line. My, um, my, well, 
My Eiffel Tower one is probably not going to be linear. It's probably going to be forked because it kind of has two starts, but I can set it up however I want. So you have linear, or actually it's going to be merged, um, linear, forked, merged, or a long single circular path spiral. So I would recommend starting with linear for your first one. Then you hit continue and it will ask you to create one or more study sets. Um, and you just hit the plus to do that. You can, you can import them directly from Quizlet. And that means you can search all of Quizlet for study sets other people have created. Once you have a study set in place, and I'll show you what it looks like to edit those in a minute, you can customize the activities. Um, so notice it had this like really linear learning path and it already preloaded it with some stuff, an entry point. Um, I can edit all of this. I can put a lock hint. If I want to put a lock there, I can do that. I can put a password. It came up with a game called Lines where you just draw lines to match. It's a matching game. Um, I can keep that there. I can hit this pull down arrow and choose a different game with the same set. It has a slide activity built in. So I have right here a slide activity that's a placeholder. And I can put in my slide content that's going to reinforce or teach some material that they're going to need and so on. So it actually came up with some stuff for me, but I have the option to delete it, uncheck it, change what it's going to be, pick a different kind of game and so on. Once those things are done, I'm going to hit generate. Um, if I go down here to study set game, I'm going to be able to, in a minute, I'll be able to edit all of those because right now, you can see that I can edit this, but later I'll show you that you can edit any of these things and do a lot with them. So if you have a slide template, you can put in I mean, a blank image. You can paste from the clipboard and notice there's nowhere to paste it. You're just on here. You just do command V or control V on a, on a PC and it will put the image onto the slide. Um, it doesn't need you to click inside a box first and then control or command V. It just needs you to do command V if you have an image saved. And it really does work from just images you saved off of um, Google's free, you know, li free licensed image search and so on. You can also insert media from Google Drive, including Google slide decks you've already created. Um, and then you can get the embed codes for GIFs. Um, you can get the embed codes for videos. You can insert a link to something that goes out to the web. If you have a PowerPoint or a PDF, you can put that up in there instead. And you can click the plus, add more slides. Or if you have a layout you like, you can duplicate, you know, and use that layout again, but with different content. And then you have all of these activities. It shows about 10, but then off to the right, there's the word more, and you can choose from any of those activities that you want. You can also decide, for example, um, how they need to submit. Is everything required? Can they skip anything? And so on. And then the study set games are these. So you have all of these games that you can try. What study set you're going to use with it. Um, it's already chosen here. And then click that little icon if you need to edit your study set. And You'll see in a minute too when we do the demo that you can edit the background so it starts as white, a white grid, and you're just adding pathways. So you click either in a horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, and you can like start here, go horizontal, that's one click. Click to turn this on for the vertical. Click in the middle here to get this to, you know, get the um, diagonal. So you can design that however you want. And in addition to designing the path, you will have some background editing tools by clicking, oops, by clicking the edit background button in the lower left corner, which has hidden now because my, there we go. In the lower left corner, there's a green button that says edit background. That brings up the ability to put in an image, shapes, different kinds of roads and train tracks and so on, plants and trees, futuristic things, um, text. So you can actually um, you can actually add and design your own background from scratch, which is what I did with that one that had like the road and the sky and the grass and the lake and the trees.
I just designed the background using their tools. You'll also notice that on this blank thing here, there's the ability to add slide activities, study set games, signposts, flashcards. But at the very bottom, there's the wizard, which is the thing we started with. That was like, here's your path, here's your da-da-da. Well, if you choose that, it, it's the very bottom thing, but I can't scroll there. I can't put the mouse there because it keeps bringing up the Google tools. But um, your deck has to be empty. You can't have anything already set up in order to use the wizard. It has to be an empty deck. I learned that the hard way. So you can see here, I started creating the path and then I just kept turning it on. And this was the last one I clicked on. So you can just create any path that you want by clicking on these little segments. And then you can drag these items to any end point. So you can't place games in the middle, but you can place things on the end points. And this is an end point. It looks like the middle, but it's actually two segments. So I can place a game right there, place one here. I can place a game here in the middle and I can place one here. And I literally am just gonna drag it. Once I have something in place there, I can click here to edit the title, but I can click the pull down arrow to change its color scheme, to edit the activity in a number of ways. So a treasure key reward, how many points they get for completing it. Um, do I want it to, if it's incomplete, they can't go on any further. Um, do I want to disable it once they do it so they can't keep going back to it? Um, so there's all kinds of features and things that you can control about these activities. One of the things we noticed this morning is you'll want to take the time to put some instructions in, and that's something you'll be able to do when you edit the activity. All right. Whew. Here we go. Now, what I did notice, let me go back to my dashboard because it looks to me like the one I started disappeared when I was goofy. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. So this is just going to keep popping up because I've hit my limit of three decks, right? So here's the one that I showed earlier. And I made this a little harder on myself. I'm going to have to really think about how this is going to work now. Because I, I have this gorgeous path, except I have to figure out how they can get there. Because if you look at it, it really has two starting points. And then it's hard to see, but it goes up the Eiffel Tower after that. So I have to figure out I did see one that was merged where they have to do both and then it culminates. So I think I want to do that. So I'm going to go to edit deck, but first I'll show you here. If I click the pull down arrow, if my deck is ready to go, I can assign it to one of my two classrooms. I can preview it with test student. You should always preview your deck. I can share it with students. I can share it with other teachers, which means it goes to the gallery. I can make a copy of it, rename it, edit the description, delete it and so on. So I'm going to edit it. Okay. And I real, oh, this is the wizard. I don't think this is going to work because I already built stuff. So remember what I said that the deck has to be empty if you use the wizard, but let's see what happens. So this says that the merged is challenging. I'm game. I haven't tried merged yet, but I designed something that looks merged. So I think I'm going to pick that one. But then they also have these other two branches with treasure key locks that are scattered to unlock a final activity. And then a board game template. There's only one. It's a Monopoly style template. That's the only one they have. Okay. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Continue. Now this study set is one that I brought in from Quizlet. I can edit anything in it. So if I notice a spelling error, I'm just looking really quickly. I think I've already, this is one of my own and I've already been through it and fixed it, right? I can do that. If I want, I can click on image and I can add images to this. So I can do a Google image search, right? And it already noticed an appartement and it went, oh, well, okay, I'm gonna, that looks like an apartment building, select. It's gonna put that image in. So that will now be part of the study set. And it's a pretty good search. Um, right, um, because Google doesn't care what language it's in, it'll still just search. I want a garage, kind of want, I don't want a parking garage, so like, uh, there we go. Let me select. So you can see how easy it is, but let me do a different one. So for, oh, let me delete that. 
um, we're going to put the apartment building over here. So let me do this. I'm going to show you. We're going to pretend I searched for an image. Oh, actually, I'm going to show you. I'm going to search for an image that's copyright free. So I'm going to go down to my settings, advanced search. Um, I want to make sure that, oh, they changed it. Um, yep, Creative Commons licenses, advanced search. Okay. So now I have an advanced search that any of these images that I pick are Creative Commons, so it's not going to be a problem for me to use them. Okay, this one's on Pixabay, which is another favorite choice of people. So if I screenshot this, it is now saved to my clipboard. If I go back here, oops, if I go back here and say that I want to add an image to the EMUB, I open this, Notice again, it says control V to paste. Now, if you're on a Mac, it's command V. So I just command V and it's uploading my image. I don't have to upload it in any particular location or copy it. So once you're there, um, right, you can, you can add images if you would like. Okay. So now it's saying customize activities, but it did. I'm noticing one thing. It did not. It did not keep my path. It changed my path, and I am sad about that. So it's saying I chose this merged one, which is pretty hard, um, and it has some signpost things, and it's got these activities. And so if I scroll down, it's like okay, start here. It has a slide activity. It has a study set game with the flashcards. It has a signpost that says, choose your path. Red is hard, green is easy. So um, here they can choose red or green. It'll bring them back here. So they pick one and then they have a final task to do. So that's different than the cool thing I was doing with my Eiffel Tower, but we'll go ahead and go with that. <laughs> and then as you can see, I can, if I've decided I didn't like, and let me see if it, oh, good. And it's showing me here on the left, green, green, green. Okay. Um, red, red, and red. So those are the harder ones. But let's say I wanted to swap something out. So I'm going to swap out memory for rockets. So all I do is click on that and I say rockets. Now, I can also associate a lock with it here, give it a hint, <clears throat> excuse me, and put in what the password is. So if you wanna add locks to your breakout, you can. Otherwise, you can just have them successfully complete the activities and that's how they break out. So whether or not you want there to be locks involved as well is up to you. Um, so you just switch out the games if you want. Um, later, we'll go in and edit the instructions because I'm not, I don't have a way to do that here, but I will have another chance in a minute. Then it has another slide activity for the finale. And then they did the gauntlet app where <laughs> students can snap to make half the class lose half their points. That's just mean. Um, and you can encourage students with a Captain America salute gif if you want. So those are like different things that you can have in if you want, and then you hit generate. Now notice, it kept my background that I had chosen. It just changed my path, right? My path doesn't look anything like the Eiffel Tower now. So now they're like, hey, you did it. Look at all that. You did some amazing work. Boom, your breakout's created. You're all done. You want to preview it? And so then you preview it. I mean, it makes it seem really easy, right? So then you preview it. This is your teacher view, but over here is your student view so that you can test it as student. Start, follow the path and unlock the activities to escape the deck, okay? Then it takes you over here to learn and you've got your entry ticket. Um, this is all stuff you can edit, by the way. And because I'm a student, it's making me do things, right? So <laughs> submit because it won't let me out of here unless I do something. Okay, so hold on, let me move this. You do have to X out of everything. It's So that's why I was saying someone was asking this morning, like how old this is. And I'm feeling like it's really not, I don't feel like it's that new actually, because some of how it operates is, is actually kind of an old, like an early version of interactive web design. So submit drawing, then you still have to exit out. I need help with, 
submit, exit out. Confidence level. So this is one of those poll questions that they have. Check it out. And then remember earlier this morning, I said, if I had wanted to, I can go back in here and I can add some information here in the notes. There's nothing in the notes right now, so you don't see it, but I can add things here and I can type stuff in the notes and put codes and stuff in there. Then draw examples and non-examples for the term une maison. So now I can put two examples of things that would be a house and two non-examples of things that would not be a house. Now, of course, it's not going to let me out of there unless I do something. So I'm just previewing my deck. <laughs> it's horrible. Um, example. Now notice one of the hard things with the slide apps is that there's no way for it to know if things are right or wrong. So if they do something, it's going to let them go. Um, I think based on what I was seeing, maybe, maybe if you set up, uh, what was that one called? I forgot what it was called. Um, if you set up that thing where the students have to submit something to you before they can go on, where you could say, all right, you have to show me um, your finished slides. So like in Zoom, let's go into a breakout room or something, or when they're back in the classroom in person or something, and then I'll let you continue because there was that option. But otherwise, if they submit, they get to move on. And so that could be a problem. The other thing that can sometimes be a problem is it's not always obvious that there's a slider and that they have to go down. So that's something else to watch out for. End of activity. So close it. Now it's going to go to flashcards and it's going to load that whole set of flashcards and there's 52 of them. And it probably won't let me, you know, like I can go through them all and when I'm done, I'm done. Um, and then it's saying, all right, choose your path. Red is hard, green is easy, do whatever you want. So I can go either direction. Here's that rockets game. So I'm a good French student. I can tell that that first word is une. Okay, and it also gave me this E, this N and this E. There is no word in French that just has an E but I'm going to try a D. It looks like it broke some, it did. So it broke up a word. This actually should be the word de, D-E. Um, S-A-L-L. So I can, une salle de bain. And then salle de bain. There we go. And now I've won that and I can go on to the next word and do rockets again and it will give me another, another word to try with. So this is the one that's like hangman. Ooh, good guess. Um, Jardin? Jardin? Ooh, I was right. Go me. I haven't taught French in a while, so. Okay. Um, so we won't play all of that one, but you get the idea with that. So we're going to close that. Okay. And then we can go on to maze, but it says the path is incomplete. Now there is another way to demo where it will let you be as the teacher. It's like, I know I didn't finish it. Just let me see the next activity. I'm just trying to test it. But when you're previewing as a student, you're testing that the game works. And so it makes you finish the whole game, right? When you do this particular mode. So go back to edit deck. Okay. Um, so now let's see if we can edit things and add some activities um, or add some like description. So let's go here. If I do that, that will just change the title. If I click here and I say edit activity, okay, um, I go to advanced settings. Here we go. Review all of the vocabulary before continuing. You will need it in order to break out. Ah, oh, I ran out of rooms. So, I'll just say you will need it. So message to show upon successful completion. So notice here, they'll say, they say things like, oh, the key is one, two, three, four. Like you could actually set it up so that um, it actually gives them a code to something. Although this is grayed out. It also gives me a chance to edit the study set. So right now it's not editable. The only thing I can do in this view is remove some words if I don't want all of these words to be part of it. So I can remove some words. 
um, flip the terms and definitions, definition or image as question prompt. Um, I can do that as well. And then I can allow challenges um, so that they're one-to-one -one real time activities um, between, two, between two students. So they give you a deck preview with students to see what they mean by that so that you can try that out if you like it. <clears throat> This is just app info. So they're like, it's a simple study aid. <laughs> there isn't much to it. And then there's still another advanced. It's the same advanced settings as it was before. So I'm just going to save that. And so now I've added some information there. This one, edit activity. Red path is hard. Green path is easy. I can embed a GIF here if I want. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> It did a sign, but I can say um, choose wisely. Um, and see if it comes up with anything. So I was hoping for that for like that scene in um, Indiana Jones when he has to when he's with Sean Connery and they have to choose the fork in the road, but I don't see that. Um, so in any case, if you see if you see a good a good one, I guess I'll do this. If you see a good one, you can pick it and add it in. Right. And there you go. Um, you can also put a link in here. You can change the font size. Um, you can bold, italic, underline, and you can change the color of the background and of the foreground. So if I want to, I can do background color um, and save. If at this point I want to swap things out, I can do some additional things. Remember I said you can add a game at any endpoint. So if I want to, for example, it looks like because of my Eiffel Tower thing, we have some additional like places right now this one's going to be a little tricky this has to go here to the merge but i see an interesting opportunity to add a game right here and it just picks one it picked memory but i can click here and choose any game that i want um sorry that's not what i meant to do there we go um i can pick any game that i want so this one only works if you have multiple students playing together in a place where they can see because one student draws and the other one guesses. There's also a traditional memory game. Just remind the kids they're going to have to scroll and the bigger your study set is, the more of a problem that can be. Um, word attack. And it kind of shows you like that one doesn't work unless you have two study sets available. And it's like, I don't have two study sets. Let's do sort me. Um, sort terms and query. Oh, but this one also needs two study sets. So if you had, for example, home and furniture versus garden vocabulary, then you would have home and furniture study set, garden study set, and then they would actually sort words into the correct study set. Um, so remember again, this is really good. The study sets are really good for content vocabulary, right? Because they're really designed to help practice that in a whole bunch of ways. Let's see what pairs is. Um, this also requires two students. So pairs is a classroom map where each student is given a random card and needs to move about the class to find their matching pair. So this is not designed for Zoom, right? This is only really designed for in-person activities. So there's a, one of the things they've done is they've tried to make a digital breakout that has some opportunities in it if the teacher wants for the students to interact physically with things. Um, Maze, you saw this morning. So remember that how maze works is they have to find, so like un sofa goes with sofa or couch. So they need to drag the car to the black truck, right? So you can put in any of those things that you want. Um, spin the wheel. Ooh, let's do that one. Let's save. So let's go into, that's going to choose this study set. Let's see our advanced settings. Uh, yes, answer correctly without mistakes. Well, I'm going to say that without mistakes. I have no idea what the mistakes might look like. Um, and then we're going to save. So now we have word wheel. So if we wanted to try that one, we could put this in demo mode and then try that. But there's also a way, oops, sorry. Yes, yes. Um, oh, I don't know if you noticed when I said answer correctly without mistakes, um, it actually popped that up with the little speaker for immersive readers so that they could have those instructions read to them, but only in English. So they're gonna spin. Um, and, oh, I see. And it's still like hang, oh, it's like, um, not hangman, we know this. It's like wheel of fortune. 
Um, so I'll take an E, please. Okay, so that has EE. -E. Let's see if it'll let me spin again. Um, I, for 60 points, it looks like, I'm going to take an N, right? So it's a little bit like Wheel of Fortune. I can just keep spinning, and mm, that didn't help much. Um, but I can keep spinning, and I don't know what happens, though, if I pick a letter that's not in here, it'll probably not let me continue spinning. Ooh, nope, Arr, I got a big red for the A. Don't try the A again. A was bad. Let's try an O. Oh, there's an O. Mm, let's try, can I keep, oh, I can keep going. Okay, the T, so you can see that I don't even have to keep spinning. I can actually, as long as I keep, as long as I keep um, doing well, with my letters, I can actually, ugh, no idea what this is. Um, I can keep playing. So I'm gonna put this one in. This one can be a little bit challenging. So I'll keep it on the hard side. I'm gonna say save. So I put the word wheel there. If I want to be fair, I can add a fourth activity here on the green side. Um, because it's going to take them here, then here. So we can drag one right here to this intersection, I think. Oh, that might be in the middle. Let's see if it'll let me do that. Let's do a study set. Nope, I didn't mean that. Let's do a slide activity. See if it'll let me drop it there. Nope, didn't like that. Let's try that again. Slide activity. Not there. Okay, so that's not really going to work well because I don't think there's any way I'll have to connect this path right here, actually, in order for that to work. Um, actually, even then it won't work. So I have a little bit of a problem because there's no way to get to this activity, but just so you can see how to build it, let's go ahead and edit this activity. Notice that I can insert media. So one of the nice things that I can do is I can put in slides or docs. So if you have a hyperdoc, you could put that in and it would be a hyperdoc lesson and they'd have to do that before they move on. And that could be your activity. And you could bury a clue in the hyperdoc lesson if you want. Um, so that's one option. I can browse my drive and look for a PowerPoint. Mm, I don't think, or not a PowerPoint. I can look for a docs file. Maison. I don't know if I have one in here, but I'm just gonna try. Uh, ma routine de samedi, hmm, maybe. Ma routine de samedi, ma routine, there's a lot of that one in here. I think those must be a student project actually. Um, well, let's pretend, let's see, select. It, it looks like it's grayed out, but let's see what it does. Um, ma routine de samedi, embed media, the preview direct from your drive or convert to slides images required for the slide apps, draw, placemaker, and drag and drop. So it's giving me some help um, and I have to make a choice. I'm gonna choose embed media and we're gonna see what it comes up with. Okay, my routine to Sunday. Now notice what it did. So this now is an entire slide deck, right? That has everything that they can, that they want to put in um, for the, the whole presentation. So if I had a lesson, I was looking for a lesson on the house, um, but I couldn't find one fast enough. So if I had a lesson, I could actually have students go through that lesson there, then I can add apps to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit plus, and then I can actually, um, use slide templates and they actually have just a few, not tons. They have a few templates if you want. This one's really popular. Um, so I can apply this template and then I can, now this is an app, it's a text app. If I want to, I can swap that out, delete slide app and I can drag the voice app in there instead. Right, so I can do whatever I want with these. All answers are required, or I can say at least one has to be done, at least two have to be done, at least three have to be done. So I can actually determine that and look here on the bottom, I can actually add more information, including a lock. Um, and so there's, I actually put my lock, 
Um, but I actually did this one time where I put a whole bunch of information about an organization, like I put kind of their basic info in the notes. And then the lock, it actually included the year the organization was founded. So then they had a lock and the lock code was what year was the organization founded? And they needed to have read my notes on this slide in order to have found out when it was founded so that they could then open the lock. So save. Um, fixed answer that students need to enter correctly to unlock. So you can actually, I believe I can put two. Yeah, so I could put this lock in here and I can say the number lock password is one, two, three four, save. And now there's a lock associated with this as well as a poll. Um, and all are required. So they're not going to be able to move on unless they do all of these things. And in this case, doing all of these things means doing slide one first, or the slide one is actually an entire slide deck. And then here I can actually, I can edit all of this right, and have them do all kinds of activities with the information in that slide deck if I want to. Okay. And then it's kind of auto-saved, so I'm good. I can just go back to my map. But do remember what I said here. This actually isn't going to work because what's going to happen is this path, um, I mean, I guess it'll kind of work, but there's a bit of a problem here. The students need to do all these things, but the path doesn't make sense really. If I tell it to go straight here and I try to turn that one on, it still ends up with them in an odd place where they can't get to this one. What I could do is toggle that and turn it off, toggle that and turn it off, toggle that, there we go, and turn it on. That fixed it. So you notice how I did that. Just by clicking, right, I toggle points on and off. I needed it to go, so I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm also gonna turn this one off. So now they go lines, choices, learn and practice. Who knows, like that's that slide deck, okay? Um, lines, choices, learn and practice, match, merges them back together with the people who did these activities. And then it brings them back to choices and the finale, which you can tell by looking, by the way, the slide apps have this little image logo and the study set games have their little whatever logo goes with their game. So there's one, two, three slide apps. And then the rest are any of those study set games. And then this is locked. So Hint, complete the other path, complete. Oh, so when they're done, you've completed both paths. Good job. So one thing said, choose your path, but this is saying this already is set up to where oops, if they don't complete both paths, they're not doing anything. <laughs> they can't move on. So then you know that you want to adjust this one and I'm actually trying to, but it's not letting me do it. There we go, complete the other path to proceed. So. Um, you also have, this one is a little more complex because remember this was one of the more advanced types of games. So you actually have this activity entry lock, but the way to unlock it is other. It's not a key, it's not a QR code, it's not a number code and it's not a text code. It's that they actually had to complete some activities. Um, and you can say at least, exactly, at most, and then choose a number. By default, each activity already requires at least a completed neighbor activity. So if you don't add the lock, everything actually still has to be completed by at least one other activity near it. Okay. Um, what questions do you have so far before we talk about anything else? There's just lots. I know, right? <laughs> Lots of stuff. It's cool though. It's I, cool, been... but it takes playing with it. Yes. I think like, I feel like do a simple path, like not this merged one. I went ahead and went for the merged ranks. I've already tried a simple one, um, but pick the more, like a more linear path. 
right? It doesn't have to have so many stopping points. They start, they go in a, they go in a straight line, even if the line zigzags, it's still basically just a line until they get to the end. <laughs> That's easier to start with. Um, and then you might also choose starting with the study sets because they require less editing than the slide decks do is another yeah. option. I was just looking at Quizlet because I don't use Quizlet very much. I don't, maybe I should. And to even know what a study set is, because I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So Quizlet is just an option. So if right. you go to your study sets, um, I made this one really fast to have it ready for today, just so there was already a study set here by grabbing one from my Quizlet account. Right. Um, but notice I can go down to the end. I can just click. So if I wanted to, I can just type right? Type a term, type a definition, mm -hmm. add an image if I want. Um, you don't have to use Quizlet. No, I know. But I, I mean, that's part of the, the challenge is then getting everything ready for this thing. Yeah. You know. Yes. Yes. Hence it's why doable. we did the, hence why we did the use someone else's first. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And that's also a good way to start to dive in. Now that you can see that, oh, even on someone else's, right? I can, if it's one that I made a copy of, you change I it. can come in and edit it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that can be a nice way to start understanding how the different games work. And even by editing, remember one of your options, like if you hate lines is to say, forget lines, grab a different study set game, right? Drag it to the map. Mm -hmm. Hold on, my mouse. There we go. And it picked lines again, but uh, hold on a second. Why did it do that? We've done this before. Edit activity. There we go. And if I go to edit activity, um, I can pick any other game that I want, right, to choose right. from that section. Um, word search. Haven't tried that one yet. So now I can put in a word search. Now, the. <laughs> It doesn't like the fact that in French, a lot of words are actually two words because you have to have like the, the article yeah. in front. So it just ran them all together. Right. But, but I can pick that now and I can say, um, find the words, note, um, there are no spaces, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, see, even when I was teaching, I wasn't a huge fan of this kind of word search. My favorite kind of word search was actually, um, let me see if I can preview that now. My favorite kind of word search was actually where I would give a clue to a word and then they would they would like read the clue and be like, oh, she means un placard. And then they would find the word. Um, so I wouldn't give them a list of words. I would give them clues. And that's how they would figure out what words they needed to search for. This doesn't give me the option to do that. I have no choice, but to just go through here and find my words. Like the students don't actually have to know what these words mean. That's why I've never been a fan of word searches in the traditional sense, because they don't actually have to know anything. <laughs> At least by high school, like it's, they're, they're beyond needing to show that they recognize letters in a sequence. You know what I mean? So, um, but I can, I can put this one in if I want as one of the e options on the easy path. Yeah, sure. Right. And I can do that. And so as I do it, it's crossing them off um, and taking care of that for me. Oh, there's un flute. I mean, it's very calming. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and play this for a second. Um, After anyway. your long day. Right. <laughs> just gonna do a word search now. Um, so Notice too, another way to add an activity is to just hit the plus. Um, and so launch the wizard, do a slide activity, a study set game, a side, a, um, a sign post or a new activity from something you stored in the clipboard. So the only time I could see you needing this, and I don't really see it as a need, like everything they listed there except one was something that's already here. I can just drag this to the map. I don't need to click the plus except add something from the clipboard because one of your options, for example, this one, I can copy to clipboard. Okay, because notice on the easy side, I gave them a learn and practice, but on the hard side, I didn't, right? So now I can 
actually plus add activity from clipboard and it's up here going i don't get it where do you want me and then i can drag it where i need it so i don't have to recreate it and now both sides have that learn and practice piece so otherwise i don't think you need the plus because you'll just drag what you want and you're like wow this is busy there's a lot of stuff and it's just too much you can just delete stuff just you know take care of it that way and then redesign your path or take you know trim it down a bit. <laughs> um, one of the reasons this one is so busy is because it had the, the red and the green. Mm -hmm. And then standards, as far as meeting standards, that's trickier. Um, I think the better way to meet standards with only a couple of exceptions in terms of, of standards related specifically to content vocabulary and so on in use um, is to use the slide activity. Because depending on what you do with the slide activity, you can really dig in more into the standards that you are trying to target. Because remember with the slide activity, okay, sorry, let me see if it'll let me preview it. Again, edit activity. With the slide activity, you can embed a lesson, you can put in these activities that give them a number of ways to respond. And so this one is going to be one where you can get beyond the vocabulary of a content area and really into the skills and concepts, depending on whatever you put here, because you can edit all of this um, and make it all kinds of different things where they have to talk about it in some way, they have to process it. There was another one we saw that had examples and non-examples. Um, you could make this be that, you could change this layout um, and so on. So that would help you get closer to standards. Let's go back because the other piece you saw a little bit today um, was, um, well, first of all, you can totally edit the background. So I gave you a couple of screenshots that showed that um, you can add kind of overviews or over in the air looking down views of like kind of building things, train tracks, roads, roundabouts. Um, street lights, like you can have mar markers, signposts, you can have all those things and you can put them on the map and turn them around and rotate them and do whatever you need. If you click on the trees, so that's if you click on the little road icon, you get the sky, plants, trees, parks, boats, cars, buildings, and so on. Um, and then rocket ship has a few more kind of futuristic like things. And then you have some text options and so on. Um, very much recommended that you preview your game, uh, preview it with the demo student or, um, which is this one from your dashboard, or if you are inside the activity itself as an editor, you'll see preview deck in the upper right corner. And when you're done, make sure you reset the activities. Although if you forget, it will remind you because when you next try to do it with your students, it will be like, um you have answers in here did you want to reset those and yes you probably did then you can assign it to one of the classrooms remember these aren't google classrooms these are deck toys classrooms you get two for free so pick one of your two classrooms to assign it to um, i gave you again what it looks like from the dashboard where there's these two little classrooms and the classroom will have a deck hanging off of it or you'll actually have this deck in the middle and you can assign it to the classroom by clicking on the arrow or Within the deck when you're editing, to the left of preview deck, you can assign it to a classroom or send it to the gallery. You can do that in both cases. And I highly recommend you do a practice run. So you'll remember this from this morning. I had the exact same slides. Do a practice run, invite some other teachers in, have them play it while you be the teacher in it and manage it. Um, I gave you a reminder of how to launch your game. So um, your students, actually they don't join a specific game they join your classroom so give them the link to the classroom and while they're going in you go to your dashboard and just click on the green teachers view and then once you click on teachers view um, you'll see this window that says which way do you want to view it demo student or teacher well now you want to do it in teacher and then you could create breakout rooms and make teams um, by clicking on the word teams and students. Oh, put that ex I need to put a close parentheses there. <laughs> Can't stand that. All right. Um, 
So if you click on that, that's how earlier I started showing you how to create the teams this morning, if you, oops, if you wanted to do that. And um, again, I, it might work better while we're, while we're in Zoom and distance learning. You would have to, you can't create the teams until they join. So you'd have to give your students the link and they join. Then you create the teams in deck toys. And then you have to go back to Zoom and create the breakout rooms. So what we did this morning might work even better, which was forget creating teams in deck toys, let them be on their own. And then <laughs> put them in breakout rooms in Zoom so that they can help each other if they need to. Um, but as a reminder, per your directors, you can't have breakouts in Zoom unless there is an adult in each breakout room. And Not then, in middle school. No, sorry, only in elementary. Yeah. That's per the elementary directors. Yeah. Um, and then small icons, I'll show you actually here, small little icons appear to the left. Once your students start playing, you'll actually be able to see exactly where they are. So these little icons with first and last initial appear and they appear over here and you can see their progress a little bit over here too. Um, and then they actually have a help link. They're really good. It's a lot like some of the stuff I linked to earlier that showed all the different slide apps and all the different study set games. So they have a nine articles on how to get started. They have uh, five articles on understanding the difference between private and public decks, 20 articles on the slide apps. So you have a lot of help that you can get there. And then finally at the end here, I've given you some resources for, to other ways to create breakouts. Um, this one is, I don't know if you've already created like a Bitmoji virtual classroom in Google Slides that became really big last spring. Um, someone took that same idea and went, well, wait a second, if you can create a Bitmoji virtual classroom, can't you just make a virtual room and then the items in the room, the students click on them and it gives them activities to do and hints and codes to decipher, right? Um, so same concept, creating a virtual room, but all the things in it are things they have to click on and interact with in order to break out. So I gave you a link to a video showing how to do that. I gave you a link to another blog post where she has a video at the top for how to use Google Forms for breakouts. But if you go beneath that video, which you can watch that too, it's just like how to use the advanced features of Google Forms so that you can force them to have to answer correctly before they get to the next part and so on. Um, so that's that video. And then she has like a little bit of a, like do this, choose the topics and create your clues. And then she gives you links to, I think there's links. Oh, there's not links. You have to actually, you read her thing and you notice that there's like some resources for places where you could, there we go, click here to make your own. So making your own texting stories, that would actually be a clue um, in there. Uh, five minute history introduces them to a topic and then you can pull information from it from a clue. Um, so those are some podcasts. Um, making posters, she suggests Canva, but you could actually use um, Adobe Spark, which we have a license for, very similar tools. Um, MyRebus.com to make Rebus clues, number clues. So these are all other ways that you can kind of have them think and engage in, in the work in order to also find the clues and use the clues to break out. And then finally, there's the site Breakout EDU. Now this is a pretty big, a well-established company that first started with physical breakouts for students. Um, and as a teacher, you can create your own and submit them. And if they get accepted, you actually can join their thing for free for a year. They are very expensive for their paid plans, but I gave you a link to the free breakouts. So this one actually should have gone in the other session because these are ones you don't edit, they're just done. Um, these are all free breakouts. And if it says kit required, that means you need to be in a classroom, you need to have a box, you need to have different kinds of locks and so on. But if it says digital, that means it's an online one. So you can actually pull that into your um, thing, explore it, use it if you would like. So that's another source for breakouts for you. And that is it, <laughs> I think. Other than, um, oh, 
we talked about that a little bit this morning, but yes, other than being careful with the materials that you choose to use and include the wording, the degree to which a variety of people and perspectives and so on are represented. Um, if you choose to use teams, how they're composed, um, do the students all have access to the tools and resources they will need to be successful? Um, do we want to remind them of what tools and resources they need? Is there like a notebook they did the previous week that they should have handy while they're working through this? Like, what do we need to do to help everybody be successful? Um, reminder that they have immersive reader built in and that this is a great opportunity to ensure that students have multiple ways to engage, multiple ways to share their voice, their thoughts, their ideas, their innovations, um, to challenge appropriately and so on. And then I have a link to evaluate this. Ooh, and we're done. <laughs> but you can always email me anytime. So if you decide to try it and you get stuck, you can definitely email me because I'm still practicing and creating games with this too. So we'll work it out. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay.